<clears throat> is this thing on? Apparently so. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. We've already been uh, uh, presented. Me and uh, David, we do science communication. Uh, we do also a bit of stand-up comedy about science. But uh, in addition to this, we do some sort of uh, research. And uh, part of our work I'm going to present here today, it's about uh, tuberculosis. Um, it's a serious health problem. And we, are, uh, in, in we have evidence that uh, the use of mobile phones or cell phones can actually prevent this uh, disease. So in order to give you a little bit of background information, as you probably know, tuberculosis is transmitted orally. If, you co if someone coughs or sneezes or shares food, but it's also if you engage in homosexual behavior, you can also get it. We have a friend that is gay and he has tuberculosis, so that's more than <laughs> enough for us. And also voodoo, voodoo will, will do it. Uh, it's uh, uh, people from medicine and health, uh, uh, health sciences are not aware, but if someone casts a spell, a voodoo spell on you, you can get the disease as well. Uh, so w how have we done uh, our research? Basically, we went to Pordata, which is probably, as you know, a Portuguese database with, which has all sorts of information. What we did, as you can see in this graph, is that we pulled together the cases of tuberculosis in Portugal since 1990 until 2009, also the number of people with cell phones, and you can see it's pretty straightforward. The two things are uh, related. The more cell phones you have, the least uh, incidence of tuberculosis you have. Why? We are not sure, but we think it's because people talk more on the cell phone, so there is less chance of contact of tuberculosis. <laughs> but it's not, it's not that simple, it's more complex than that. And uh, we went to Pordata again, and we tried to look at the number of cinema goers per session. So basically, we looked, we looked since uh, 1960 to 2012, and we have uh, checked that there is almost, uh, since 1976, almost a constant decrease of the, the number of people in uh, cinema theaters. So what this tells us is that since uh, there is less people per session, you have less uh, probability of, of uh, contagion. Uh, so a lot of people ask us, because they know we are doing our, our research, a lot of people ask us how should we avoid the disease? Okay, basically number one, don't go to the cinema. Number two, you should not go to theaters, concerts, uh, libraries, you should not even participate in public events. This whole thing is a mistake. <laughs> I mean, you should not do it. You should, you should do online, uh, an online event. I urge the, the organizers to do it. If you have, if someone survives to the next edition, you should do everything online, okay? Uh, you should not talk to strangers. Obviously, don't mess around with voodoo priests. Don't eat people with tuberculosis. I cannot stress this enough. It's wrong to eat people, I know, but especially avoid the ones with tuberculosis. And uh, basically, you should not leave the house and use your smartphone for human contact, okay? Uh, I think David has something uh, else to add, so I'll give the word to him. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Are you listening to me? Yes, okay. So we were very excited about these results, about these results from epidemiologic studies, so we decided to go for clinical trials. So what is the first more important thing in the clinical trial? You're right. No, you're not. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, oh, sorry. I shut down. I shut this thing down. <laughs> okay. With, okay. The, the first more. <laughs> the first more important thing in the clinical trial is the conclusion. We start with the conclusion. What we want to conclude: cell phones, cell phone use prevents tuberculosis. 
All too often, scientists forget this, that the, the more important thing is the conclusion, and they lost track of their conclusion, and their research became messy and confused. <laughs> so, generally, when people conduct clinical trials to test something on human health, they first start with animal tests. So, <laughs> we didn't do that because we think it's cruel and useless. Because dogs aren't the same as humans. Dogs don't talk at the, on the cell phone, don't they? They bark on the cell phone, <laughs> which is completely different. So we didn't do any cruel animal experiments. And we, we, went, we went straight to human clinical trials, human tests. So we already have a lot of work on this subject. We, we have conducted a number of independent clinical trials. They are independent because it's either me or Bruno that conducts them. And we are very independent. And uh, the problem with these clinical trials is that we didn't get the result that we wanted. So does, we didn't bother to publish them. Does it, the, the, so if we, don't publish, if, to, if we don't publish them, nobody knows, nobody cares. In that sense, it's more or less the same as the usual conduct of pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> so we just kept for ourselves and flattering data. But we didn't give up. The key to good clinical trialing is persistence. <laughs> so we went on, we, we did another trial with a more suitable methodology. So we have to screen for subjects. We, are, we, are screened, we we've screened for tuberculosis symptoms on subjects that we looked for on Wikipedia. And then we have the subject using a cell phone for a week. Then we have screened for tuberculosis symptoms again, and voila. There were no significant increase in tuber tuberculosis symptoms or found after cell phone use. So we got our result. Cell phones do prevent tuberculosis. So sometimes people ask us more about methodology. I really don't un understand this curiosity, but I will tell a little bit more about methodology. So sometimes people ask us for the sample. So our sample is this. <laughs> yes, our sample is one. It is a friend of ours, João Damas. Uh, you might say the sample is small, but actually it's quite tall. And uh, we get to know the sample very well. And we think uh, it's more like a question of quality of the sample, not of quantity. <laughs> and besides, João Damas is, is the most statistically significant person I know. <laughs> he almost has a PhD. He doesn't have a job. And he's about to immigrate. Well, sometimes people also ask us about the control group. That also drives me crazy, these kinds of <laughs> questions. <laughs> and uh, the control group is having someone not using a cell phone for a week and then checking for tuberculosis symptoms on Wikipedia, of course. <laughs> and uh, do we have the control group? No. And I tell you why. Because it is unethical <laughs> for human welfare issues. It is completely, completely wrong to have someone without their cell phone for a whole week. <laughs> Research has limits, you guys. Okay. So we are very excited about these results. So we want to check, want to go, we want to go back to the epidemiological data again. And we ask ourselves, what about every means of communication prevent all infectious diseases? So we compare the data on internet access subscribers, on home internet access subscribers in Portugal with new AIDS, AIDS cases reported in Portugal. And what we found out is this. It basically proves that, it, basically proves that it's better to stay at home on, on the internet watching porn than being, somewhere, than being out contracting some sexual transmitted disease. 
So means of communication, probably all means of communication prevents all infectious diseases. So we're really excited about this new line of research and we kept digging into the data. And we find out something even more exciting. What about if <laughs> means of communication could prevent health issues not related with infectious diseases? And we come out with this result, this very exciting result, which means that as the internet access home subscribers increase in Portugal, the number of car accidents has been decreasing, which is quite remarkable because people can be at home on the internet playing online games, driving a car. They can eventually meet a pedophile, but they will not have a car accident. So conclusions. Cell phone use prevents tuberculosis. <laughs> Bruno didn't talk about this, but two cell phones are more effective than one. That is because from 2004 onwards, there are more cell phones in Portugal than people. So, which me and the trend of uh, the, 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 the decrease in tuberculosis rate is still, is, is still going down. So the effect of one more cell phone per person is quite, uh, actually quite good. Then all, mean of, all means of communication prevents infectious diseases and possible non-infections related morbidity as well. And remember guys, leaving the house is very dangerous even if you have your cell phone. So future work. We'll have João Damas to have, we'll, we'll have another clinical trial with our sample. João Damas already uses two cell phones normally, and we'll have him wear three or four to see if the symptoms in tuberculosis get even better. So I thank you all for attending, especially, I especially thank those who are at home and didn't bring their germs in here and, and didn't risk having a car accident on the way here. Thank you very much. I have a simple question. Uh, it's true that many infectious diseases are on their way out, but then occasionally we'll have a bird flu or a swine flu or something like that. So I'm just wondering if you have any explanation for that, why the sudden rise? Well, um, because people don't use their cell phones enough. I mean, <laughs> if, if, if instead of going to the supermarket and getting in contact with a chicken or something like that, if they order online, it's, it's much better. If they, if instead of going to the farm, to a farm or something like that, if they see a movie, everything will be real result, you know? That's the main explanation. People should live more virtually. Everything should be virtual, okay? <coughs> I, 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 it's a very interesting model. And Thank you. We, we, we for me personally, it's important because I work on infectious diseases. So I, I find it I find it relevant. But I I was a bit surprised to notice there were some stronger correlations in your data, which you seem to have avoided. For example, it did seem at least plausible that using the internet causes people to buy a cell phone. <laughs> well, because. Can you explain better? Well, the, the data spoke for itself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, there is, there is also, uh, there is positive uh, feedback, of course. If people, the more people use cell phones, probably the more they use the internet and, and vice versa. So if people get this healthy habit, which is using cell phones and internet, one thing goes after another and they'll get a healthier lifestyle with less infectious diseases, of course. Uh, there was an, another correlation which equ looked equally strong, actually, and I suppose you didn't mention that, and that is that, 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 that car accidents are uh, uh, associated with a decrease in tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, it seems to me you missed the obvious points. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. 
Well, uh, I have to say that I'm appalled at the way my jury colleague is uh, manipulating your data. <laughs> but, uh, so I, uh, I will just uh, I actually ask you a couple of questions on, on um, because I'm very into uh, entrepreneurship. Um, I, I was told to say this word here today. <laughs> and, and a couple more, but... Uh, uh, anyways, uh, and I was wondering if you would consider, for example, the use of some sort of uh, device on, on large poultry exploration. So, for example, <laughs> so as a means to control the pandemics of bird flu and such. For example, I mean, I think, what do you think? We are actually pretty much against everything that's animal experimentation because we think it's wrong. So, we think, um, no. This is the quality of life of chickens. You mean? Well, you know, why, why chickens, are, they're not yes. entitled to have a, f a cell phone. That's my question. And no, yes. okay. no internet access. I yes, mean, uh, I think this, this sort of anthropocentric vision yes. is... Uh, yes, for, you, for, you, right, for right. animal welfare, I think we would agree, of course, fundamentally. As long as they have opposable thumbs. I mean, I mean they, they, they just have to develop very uh, rapidly the, the issue of uh, picking up a cell phone or something like that, but apart from that, yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you have data on a recent experiment with public transportation in Lisbon where the number of routes have been reducing, and I was wondering if you know whether that is impacting on the infectious disease. The number uh, of what, sorry? The routes for public transportation have been reduced drastically, especially for buses and stuff like that, where you would imagine there's a lot of... Uh, so I'm wondering, one, if there's a correlation between the cell phone usage and the number of public transportation usage, and also what's the impact of that in the... I would, uh, I would just comment that uh, although, uh, of course, you, you using public transportation is wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a very dangerous behavior. If you have to leave the house, you should leave the house in your own car and with the windows closed. But. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I guess that some people think that they can contradict that effect using the cell phone on the, uh, on the public transportation. I would say that doesn't work like that. If you really want to be protected, just use the cell phone at home. Don't go to public transportation. And, and if you do have to go to public transportation, just wear uh, like a, a bubble or something that protects you, at least, at least a, a gas mask or something like that. I mean, it's the least that, that you can do. Ah, but the but this is, this is similar to what I was just going to ask, because you see all these people wearing, especially when you travel, these kind of uh, face masks, which I guess are supposed to prevent contamination from infectious diseases, correct? Uh, but I, you're talking about Japan or something? Per, yeah. <laughs> not Portugal. Not so much in Portugal, but if you travel in Asia especially, you have a lot of these. But then your hypothesis or your data raise the question, because this mask is going to prevent cell phone use, correct? It's yeah. hard to talk on the cell phone if you have a mask over your face. Yeah, the, the so is the mask actually more contributing to the problem yeah, we, rather we are, than actually preventing it? That's we, my we question. Also, we also have an entrepreneurial uh, spirit. So we actually, we want to develop masks, gas masks, that ha has like a... a, a uh, microphone and we, you can talk on the f cell phone whilst using the mask. I think it's the best option. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> have time for one quick question. Uh, I think you guys are uh, heading for a Nobel Prize. I kid you not, because you just mentioned that access to internet at home reduces car accidents. So here's your solution, put internet in cars. In their way, it's going to be zero car accidents and zero fatalities. So you guys, That's a very good idea, entrepreneurship sir. again. An excellent idea. Well, I agree, it is an excellent idea. Thank you for the suggestion. It's Thank okay, you very much. That was, that was really good.